This video is going to take you through the process of doing your building heat loss calculations, sizing your heating system, and then we'll look at the results and the exports that are available. First, we'll start by reviewing the settings. When you start your project, you'll be in the floor plan mode. You'll then have the option to choose building heat load, which will create a toolbar similar to this. Before we start drawing though, let's click on heat load in this area and it takes us to the settings page. Going through these one by one, the external winter temperature is used for any heat loss through external walls, windows, doors and roofs. You can enter your own number or choose from the defaults in this drop down menu. The ground temperature is used for the floor and once again enter any number that you want. And the thermal bridging coefficient, this is essentially a percentage that gets added on to any heat losses through the materials. Set to 5% here, but feel free to change it. Ignore the heat gain inputs because that is for heat load calculations, which we're not covering in this video. For the building, you can choose what year it was built and this will inform the, the number of air changes per hour. So the more modern the building, the less air changes and less heat loss, which is great if it's possible. You can set the default wall height. Then we have a list of materials for each component that you can draw with. So you choose these as a default, but as you're adding them and drawing more rooms, you can override anyone specifically and change the U value. And if there's any common ones that we don't have that you wanna add, so maybe your external wall is something different that we don't have here, back to the top, you can either edit a custom material or create a new one. So here you can give it a name, say what component it is, and then enter the thermal conductivity. And then you can find it in the list. And then for the roof settings, we have 10 different roofs available, as well as a flat roof, so 11. And for example, if you want to do a shed, which is this one, you have to just input a H. So the height's 2.5, feel free to change it to whatever you want. And that is everything for the settings. So now let's draw some rooms. So firstly, if you have a PDF, go ahead and upload that and you can just draw on top of it. Make sure it is to scale. But if you don't have a PDF, that's totally fine. We can go ahead and draw the rooms ourselves. We have a long list of defaults here that all use the MCS and SIBSI recommendations. If the numbers don't look correct, you might have the settings wrong. Or at the same time, if you're trying to create a new room or a specific temperature, you can override each one of these. So just go ahead and pick one that's similar and you can override the properties. So let's just go ahead and draw a lounge. So I've selected it. Now I click once when I want to start drawing and we can see there is dimensions. So let's say as we get to six meters or close to it, I can click again. That's a left click and it'll start drawing this way now. So I'll keep going, maybe like 2.5, click again. And then because I wanna finish the room now as a rectangle, just to show you as I'm, it does snap to 90s, you can hold shift if you did want to draw a funny angle. But if not, you can see that's tracking along the bottom straight. And as we intersect at a 90 degree angle, it locks onto it. So you can go past, but it will find that angle for you. There are a few ways to finish this. You can do a left click and then press escape, or you can just do a right click and it will complete this room for you now. And we can stretch it around if we want to, we can pull it in different angles. Uh, yeah, whatever we need to. Then if we wanna draw the next part to this building, let's say we wanna do a kitchen and we have the dimensions, you can just draw it anywhere that you want like this. So it's a bit of a funny angle. So right click to finish. Drag things as well if it wasn't quite aligned. So you could do something like this and then just pull it over to where it's going to be. You can kind of see, you can get the hang of like, if you want to intersect a corner, you can kind of pull it to it like that. Another alternative is if you want to do the next room now, you can choose the dining room. You can grab the corner and then if we hover over this, don't click, pull away, it will find us that intersection. And as we get here, we can do a right click again and it will populate that for us because it's, it's filled in the gap. 
You can also do this edit wall here. So say for some reason we wanted to make more of a bend in this wall. Or maybe a couple of them. We can drop a couple points in and uh, start pulling it away. You can do another one here. That's just going to start pulling that away now. And we can add more points. And yeah, make whatever shape we want. So you can keep going and draw in. And just to show you the properties, if we click on this lounge now, you can change the name. So we could call it um, front room if we wanted to. We can change the temperatures that it's using for the calculations. We can override default air changes, the heights, and the materials too. And if there is a chimney, we can choose to add that. And as we're drawing the room, the kilowatt load is being calculated. So let's say now it's 1.94. If we do add a chimney with a throat restrictor, straight away it's gone up to 3.7 because there's many more air changes per hour in that room. And if you want to do a level above, click to go above and yeah, you can just start drawing once again. Next, we'll add some doors and windows. So we can choose the door or the window from the toolbar here. And let's start with the window. So as we select this, it's a blue rectangle. And when it looks like this, you can't stamp it because it's not assigned to a wall. But as soon as you intersect with a wall, it changes like that. And you can then click and add it. And as you click on it, you've got all the properties here that you can change from the name, the size, the material and temperatures. And the door works exactly the same way. So you can't add it here. But as soon as you intersect with a wall, you'll see the shape and you can press F to rotate it, whatever angle you want to. And you can put them internal as well. It will automatically recognize the internal ones and the materials you've selected. And once again, you can change any of those properties. And the final step is to add a roof. You will have a flat roof by default. So if your building has a flat roof, you don't need to make any changes to it. That will automatically be included in the heat loss calculations. But if you wanted to add a different type of roof, you'll need to create a level above. And here you'll see in gray, all the rooms from below. You can add multiple types of roofs. So if there's you know, extensions with their own roofs and then a main roof, similar to how we drew different rooms below, you can just add different types of roofs. And if the roof goes over multiple different rooms, the heat loss will be proportionally distributed between them. So you can easily click roof here. And if we go over part of these rooms, just like this, it will default to a flat roof. But then in the properties here, there's a range of layouts to choose from, and you can edit the dimension properties for each one. Next, we're gonna look at drawing the system layout. We do have a specific video on designing a heating system. So right now we're just gonna cover the basics. So when you're ready, click design and then click on mechanical. And this brings you to the view where you can design your heating system. First, add your heat source, which can be your heat pump or your gas boiler. You can edit the properties if you want to, like Delta T and things like that. And you can choose the multi pipes to draw the feed and return pipes throughout the building. Then you'll notice the text in the rooms is red and that's because we haven't provided heat emitters with enough kilowatt load to meet the heat loss. So there we have 3.87 in the front room and only 3.5 kilowatt heat emitter. So it doesn't quite turn green. Whereas in the remaining two rooms, as we had heat emitters that exceed the heat loss, you can see the text does turn green. And now we can look at the results for the whole system. So when you're ready, click results on the toolbar and straight away, everything is calculated. It's all SIBSI verified. And it includes things like the recirculation pump duty. And if you hover over the heat source, you can see things like the total load in kilowatts, the total system volume. And then when it comes to the actual heat loss, it's categorized into different parts. But for example, if you want to see information for the room, you can go and turn that on and it will appear centrally to the room. Then if you want to see things 
on the individual component. You can go down to the wall, for example, and as you turn on that result, the results will be specific to the component. Same for the windows and the doors. You might need to zoom in to see it, but the information is there. And if you hover over it, you can see all the information too. And finally, we can export this. So there's a PDF and a bill of materials that you can export to as well. But specific to heat loss, we have the heat loss report, which will give you a Word document that you can edit as much as you like. So here you get a cover page where you can put some more information in if you like, that will have your logo too. Then we have the contents page. And the first part here is just giving you an overview of the system. So different temperatures, total heat loss, you can put in your pump model, it'll tell you the worst performing room. And then the remaining pages are all the information about what you have designed. So here's a summary of all the rooms which ones are connected to each other, the dimensions of each room, the different material heat loss, the heat loss for each material type, and then the actual materials that have been used for all the components too. And if you've overridden any, that will show up here. And then the overall heat loss calculations, which includes the materials, the thermal bridging, air changes, and then finally, you get a summarized version of the heat loss. And that is everything relating to doing your heat loss calculations in H2X.